Subgrey is over here. In this video, I will be reviewing another Web3 game that is quite early in development. That's Corora Beasts. Originally, the project has been developed on Polygon, but now the developers are moving it into Arbitrum. As far as I understand, the project doesn't have the official white paper, but it does have a lot of information on the website and on the onboarding page. So we're gonna check that. And let's start with the website. What do we have here? What is Corora Beasts? Corora Beasts is a multi-dimensional gaming ecosystem. The island of Corora is the backdrop for an ever-growing world where beasts with elemental powers roam free. Here, trainers from around the world set out to explore, collect, craft, battle and master the elements. In the world of Corora, you own the assets you play with and can take them with you across all of our games. So it's not one game, it's an ecosystem. And two games are listed here, Corora Beast Brawl, that says face off in the battle arena against uh, players from around the globe and the free PvP based game. And Corora Wilds are currently a collection of mini games that is set in the universe where the upcoming MMORPG it's gonna be set as far again as far as I understand that. Unfortunately, I don't have the footage of uh, these mini games, but I do have the footage of the alpha of the Beast Brawl. I'm gonna show it later. For now, let's keep reading about the game. The Kuro Token. Uh, the entire Kuro ecosystem is powered by the Kuro Token. Housed on Ethereum blockchain, Kuro represents the total value of our economy. With it comes various applications across all Corora platforms as it can be used to purchase beasts, materials, customized, uh, customizable traits and other features. While it's not required to play the game, it lends itself to a fully immersive gaming experience. And uh, the tokenomics has not been released yet. Then we have collections with a description of purchasable NFTs. Uh, but I think they better described in the onboarding so we're gonna get to it there. Team is quite large, but one concern I have about it is that it's anonymous. You, there is no way to click on anybody to see their profile. Now let's switch to the onboarding page. That is kind of like a partial white paper, I guess. First, it starts with the community perks. Uh, if you join the Discord, you can choose the faction and uh, participate in different communities events uh, to potentially win prizes uh, like the NFTs. Next, we have the concept of the games. Again, Beast Brawl. It's a web PvP turn-based strategy game where you collect beasts and characters from other ecosystems, design teams and send them into battle against other players, all while unlocking rewards from the seasonal battle pass, climbing the ranks and obtaining special collectibles that you can freely trade with other players. This is a screenshot and, well, Alpha basically uh, looks like that too. And then the concept of Corora Wilds is the concept of uh, Pokemon meets Albion. It is a web-based multiplayer creature collecting RPG. And they say we will be releasing bits of alpha gameplay to our community and holders starting very soon. They already released One Piece. Unfortunately, I was unable to uh, play that. Then we have the token description here too. Uh, and it states everything in our ecosystem can be accessed for free and our games are playable for free too. However, owning one or more Kuroro's digital NFTs will unlock the additional dimension within our ecosystem. Ownership and ownership comes with its own perks and rewards. And then they have the description of the NFTs. Origin beasts are only a few thousand and they act as alpha pass into everything we do. Owning an origin makes you a recipient of various upcoming airdrops and special accesses such as a Kuro token, trainer, PFP collection, new games and more. There are only 6600 original beasts and there will be, on, be around 1300 starter beasts, creating a total collection of around uh, 8000 first edition beasts. Original beasts are divided into three different rarities, core, rare and epic. Starters are a unique type of beast that are out of three bases, can evolve into 12 different forms. And in terms of initial distribution, their rarity is similar to rare beasts. So middle rarity. Origins and starters are being airdrop in Arbitrum to the holders of our current origin polygon collection very, very soon, stay up to date. Uh, so yeah, collection is also on polygon right now so 
after the full migration to the um, Arbitrum, they're gonna airdrop those and the full beast guide to be released soon. Every origin is the recipient of the upcoming free airdrop, starting with the Kuro, our ecosystem token. Then you can also stake that to increase the allocation of the airdrop by up to 2x. And after the origin airdrop to Arbitrum, there will be other new mechanics introduced for origin staking. Origins can be used in every game we develop. In Beast Brawl's alpha stage, you can either play with a free rotating pool of beasts or use the origin beast to expand your options. In Corora Wilds, you will have the access to the reproduction mechanic and will have to will have the ability to play with a unique origin skin that won't be available to any other player. And special rewards, again, by owning the beast, you will be eligible for some rewards and access to the alpha. Then we have badges. Currently the only existing badge is the Golden Trainer badge. You can get it from the ferry tickets. The badge collection will be expanded in the future, adding different kinds of badges with the different types of uses, which will tie together to the game uh, and the faction. So Golden Trainer badge perks. Uh, again, the Kuro airdrop. Supposedly, if you hold in the badge, it will give you more tokens. Limited first edition collectible, basically show that you're an OG of the community and more information to be released soon. Then we have ferry tickets, which are original point of entry into the ecosystem. All the original ferry tickets are sold out, but they are available to purchase uh, on secondary market on the open sea. And a couple hundred of silver ferry tickets are still held by uh, treasury for contests. They have like the raffle, different competitions in the community where they where the price is the silver ticket, for example. And here we have the probabilities of obtaining certain items from those tickets. So gold ticket will give you one origin beast in the form of an egg, one cyan beast in the form of an egg. And actually these eggs are also being sold in secondary market. Uh, then you have one golden badge and uh, a higher chance to score an unlucky, a lucky beast. I suppose that's like increasing the rarity. And then the silver ticket will give you uh, one origin beast and then 10% chance to obtain, to obtain the starter beast and 10% chance to obtain the golden badge. So that's pretty much all the information available. I actually like the project. So I went ahead and bought a couple of NFTs. Like if you check the profile, you can actually redeem tokens here. Um, redeem tickets, excuse me, if you have them. You can also open eggs and you can stake your uh, beast NFTs. As you can see, I got three of those. Uh, these two are origins and this one is Scion. So what forms are NFTs are available on the secondary market? Uh, first, the tickets that we talked about. The silver tickets is sitting at around uh, 0.09 ETH uh, currently the floor price. And the golden ticket is around 0.4 ETH. It's pretty expensive. One interesting thing about the NFTs is that ferry tickets, as well as, wait, that's also ferry ticket, as well as the golden badge are on Ethereum. But the beasts themselves are on Polygon. That's kind of interesting. The trainer badges are currently sitting at 0.038 ETH and beast floor actually scions there are a couple for 0.03 ETH mainly 0.05 and you can also see there are like starter eggs here that you can also like buy and open them yourself and the origins actually went up in price because I bought uh, two of them I think at 0.05 and now the floor is at 0.07. As you can see, there are like rarity and the stats. I, I don't know if stats actually mean anything in the current state of the game. I think it's like meant for uh, for later. And, and I don't know if this is actually gonna have any effect in Beast Brawls, for example, if you're using those, because like the same type uh, can have a different stats. For example, you see those two antics they have different stats. If you check, they have different stats, but it's the same type uh, of the beast. So I don't know how that works exactly. Okay, now I'm gonna show footage of Beast Brawl Alpha.
So as you can see, this is pretty standard turn-based uh, PvP arena where you just pick like the team of beasts and you use it on the battlefield. There's actually a document that outlines the type of beasts, uh, their weaknesses and strength against each other. I didn't uh, study this here, so I just I was just like clicking random buttons basically. So I got completely annihilated there. But yeah, this is what we got for this project currently. I hope uh, developers will roll out something new pretty soon. Definitely an interesting project for my taste. I'm gonna be following that. That's all I currently got for you. Please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.